Hello there, and welcome to the middle school webinar that will present revisions for Bundle 2 of our Instructional Framework Documents for English Language Arts and Reading for grades 6 through 8. The purpose of this presentation is to familiarize teachers with the changes that have taken place within curriculum um, that have allowed us to make the document more user-friendly and one that can be reliable and useful and implemented in the classroom. The documents that we will be using for this training is 7th grade, Bundle 2, the first unit. Please make sure that you have a, a printed copy or an electronic copy that you can look at while we review the different components of that framework. So let's talk about what kind of revisions took place. The first thing that we did is looked at data to make sure that we were covering the skills that data told us needed to be emphasized a little bit more based on the needs of our students. We also looked at the mapping of the assessed curriculum, which basically means that we need to cover the assessed curriculum before assessments for grades 6 through 8 in both reading and in writing. Another new component had to do with Figure 19 and ensuring that we were marrying that process standard with genres and strands. We also included a feature that allows teachers to see the previous data on specific standards that will be taught in each unit. We also provided increased specificity. The vertical alignment feature for Focus Teaks also gives us an idea about where students were and where students are headed with a specific skill. We also provided star stems. Some of the benefits that are going to be a result of these uh, changes have to do with how we're going to be able to rely and use the documents as a planning tool. We also were able to provide further clarification with the ambiguous TEKS and process standards. It also will allow teachers and teams and campuses the freedom to choose the delivery or the instruction of the curriculum. It is still considered a work in progress, so we'll be making revisions as the need arises. And you now have a document that is very strongly aligned with the STAR standards and the focus of the assessment. Because of that, it has the potential to yield increased academic achievement if implemented with fidelity. The layout for our new instructional framework um, includes a unit overview. It includes performance indicators, the academic language, a new element is a figure 19 and the genre integration, which we will go over, the focus standards, the spiral standards, any misconceptions, resources, and then questions for the writer. Anything that you see in blue are elements that we will be going back to add after this year. So now let's go ahead and examine the document. Once again, we're looking at seventh grade. Bundle 2, the first unit. Your first page should basically look the same as your previous bundle. You have your estimated duration, which is just an estimate. You also have your unit overview. If you have a question about why certain teaks were paired together or what the general overview or idea is behind the unit, please rely on the unit overview. You also have the academic language of instruction that the teacher will be using in the instruction of that unit. Our next section is actually a brand new section to our curriculum documents. This features the process standards and their integration with the genres of reading. Pages 3, 4, 5, and 6 for this specific unit provides examples of how process standards were used and integrated with the different strands and knowledge and skills statements. I am right now looking at page 4 and I want to show you an example of one of these process standards. It was important that we included this section 
in the instructional framework documents because we know that in STAR up to 65% of the assessment specifically deals with how process standards were dual coded with the genres and the knowledge and skill statements. So it was important that we provided specificity, that we provided resources and support when it came to the dual coded items, the integration between the process standards and the knowledge and skill statements. This one specifically is dealing with figure 19D which is about making inferences. If you look, we actually married this specific process standard with expository text or the genre of expository text. So we looked at the knowledge and skill statement. So what we're left with is a marriage of a process standard which is making inferences to the genre of expository text. And with it, we provide specificity with statements like including but not limited to or defining the different elements of the genre. In addition to that, we were also able to provide historical performance data on that specific marriage itself. In previous assessments, for example, in 2013 and 2014, we have an idea about how Umbel ISD performed on that specific skill. I would encourage teams to also provide that data and individual teachers to also look up that data. We were also able to provide some STAR tips. In addition to that, we were able to look at every single question in the previous administrations of the STAR in 2011, 13, and 14 and pull out the questions that had to do with in this case, the marriage between complex inferences and expository text. These questions serve as huge benefit for teachers and for students, not just assessments, but also instruction. So we hope that you're able to utilize them in your classroom. Another example of a process standard is found on page 5 with figure 19E, which has to do with summarization. This specific unit marries figure 19E with expository text. So we were able to look at not just what figure 19E is, but also the data behind figure 19E and expository text. In addition to that, we provided specificity with the marriage and specificity with the content and the genre itself. Anytime you see a teacher note, we're, all, we're actually talking about teacher tips and misconceptions. We provided additional star tips. And there go those star stems again, once again, looking at the different stems that were available for this specific marriage in grades 6 through 8. Another example that we have is figure 19F, which is your paired passage process standard. Anytime we're teaching a specific genre, we also want to make sure that we're pairing it with another piece of text, whether it's the same genre or a different genre. Those skills are different, so we provided a different resource for Figure 19F. Once again, a very important process standard, looking at the data and looking at the specificity within the genre integration, what it actually means to compare in this case, expository text with other genres, star tips, and of course, that every single question that has ever been asked on the star assessments dealing with figure 19F, which are your paired selection questions. The next section deals with the focus standards. These are found on pages 7 to 14 for this unit first change that you'll notice is that we are now dividing them by the language components. You'll see reading, then writing, then perhaps research, then your spiral standards. We provided the knowledge and skill statement for every TEKS that is a focus for that unit. We also provided the TEKS and then of course the historical performance data on that specific TEKS. A new feature is a vertical alignment feature, where teachers now get to see in one document what that skill looked like in the previous year 
and what it looks like in the upcoming year. In addition to that, we were able to provide data on your current student's performance on the prerequisite skills the year before. So this lets us know additional information about how we can meet the needs of students in your classroom. You'll see specificity of course, teacher tips or misconceptions, star tips, and then of course star stems. Once again, every single question that has ever been asked dealing with that specific teaks on the released items of the assessments. I wanted to show you an example of a writing process one. You'll see of course that you have your teaks and you also have your data for that specific writing teaks. You have your specificity, your star tips, and then the star stems. This is another example of the writing process standard. You have your teaks, your specificity, teacher tips, additional star tips, and star stems. It was important that we provided increased specificity for the writing process standards and the grammar standards because we know in seventh grade specifically this is an area where our students are struggling. We also provided specificity for the writing genres, whether it's a personal narrative or an expository. We have our data for the revising portion of that specific genre. We have specificity for both the essay and the revising portion. We have star tips. And then we have stems for the star revising of expository stems in this case. After the focus standards, you will see the spiral standards. These are the skills that are to be naturally embedded in the unit. They're not skills that should necessarily be to stop and teach kind of skills. They're the skills that should flow and be developed with the unit um, in itself. In addition to that, spiral skills also include vocabulary development, oral and written conventions, which for seventh grade specifically, we included performance data and specificity because once again, we know this is an area where our students are struggling, so we wanted to make sure that we included specificity for these. In addition to that, you'll see listening and speaking as an embedded component. The last page or two pages of the documents, you will see the misconceptions the resources, and the questions for the writer. I do want to remind you that this is an area that will be fully developed next year, so hang tight. Because we know this is a work in progress, and because we know we're still under construction, we know how important feedback is from teachers, from teams, and from campuses. These feedback sessions will occur after each nine-week period, after benchmarks, and after STAR assessments. They will happen within your campus PLC and there will be a standardized form that will be filled out to let us know what revisions we need to consider for the upcoming year. The revision process will take into consideration the teacher feedback along with the STAR data and you will see some revisions once again for the year 2015 and the year 2016. I wanted to thank you for sitting with me for the past 15 minutes as I reviewed with you the changes that have occurred within our instructional framework document. My name is Debbie Perez and I am the secondary ELAR coordinator for Umbel ISD. My contact information is up there. We also have Elizabeth King who is our secondary ELAR facilitator who is mostly at campuses working with teams and teachers and alts. I want to specifically thank our middle school curriculum writing team who worked extremely hard and put in a lot of hours to make sure we had a document that we can actually use in the classroom. So shout out to Miss Ann Blake and Brenda Ryder and Christy Howell and Jennifer Woodall, Dravicia Breed, Kelly Hutchinson, Kelly Culver, and Melinda Green. Thank you so much for all the work uh, with these documents. Feel free to contact me with any questions. Feel free to ask your alts about any questions that you may have about the documents. And I look forward to seeing the implementation of our curriculum in your classrooms. Thank you and have a good day.